Hello, uh, in this video we'll study digital music synthesis in MATLAB. We'll first talk about the musical score and try to understand it. Then we'll move on to uh, implementing the Beethoven Symphony as an example. And finally we'll talk about the ADSR envelope and how it can be used to enhance uh, an audio signal. This is an example of a musical score, which is going to be our example for uh, this video. The horizontal line and the musical score represent the time. So each note is displayed at a particular time in the musical score and the vertical lines represent the frequency or the note. Representing sound using mathematics, we can use sinusoidal signals and add them together. As human beings, we have a specific range of frequencies that are uh, audible for us, or the frequencies that humans are able to hear range between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. This range has been split into uh, sets called octaves. Each one of these octaves can be divided into 12 sub-frequencies called the notes. And these notes are what we will see, what we usually see in, in piano keys. Uh, and there is 12 of them. Each note is 2 raised to the power 1 over 12 of the next note. For the purpose of this video, we'll focus on the octave that ranges between 220 and 440 hertz. That means note A will have 220 times 2 raised to the power 0 over 12, which is 220 hertz of frequency. And the last note, which is note G, will have a frequency of 220 raised to the power uh, times 2 raised to the power 11 over 12 hertz. Notes in a musical score can be located between lines or on the lines. So lines, we'll refer to them as the lines. The spaces between the lines, we'll call them the spaces. If a note lies, lies at the very bottom line, then we'll call it note E. The second from the bottom, that is note G, and so on. So we'll have from the bottom up, note E, G, B, D, and then finally F. If a note lies on the first space from the bottom, then that is note D. Next, we have note F, A, C, and finally note E. Again, from bottom to top. So understanding the concept behind the musical score, we can express uh, the Beethoven symphony that is given here in terms of musical notes and translate each uh, note into its name or each note symbol it's into its name based on its location in the musical score. So the first note we see here is no G because it lies on the second line from the bottom. Second note, third note are repeated. Uh, so we'll say G again and then G. The fourth note lies on the first line from the bottom. So that is note E. Next we have a, a rest, meaning we're pausing between notes. And then this note lies on the second space. Remember, this is considered the first space. This is the second space. So this is going to be considered note F. And it's repeated three times. F, F, F. And finally, we have a note that lies on the first space from the bottom. So that is note D. Now we'll study what each symbol in the musical score represents. 
whether it's a note or a rest. Symbols indicate the length of the note, meaning how long uh, we're playing that particular note. Notes can have a length of a whole note, a complete length. Same goes for rest. They can be complete or whole. A note can have half the length of the complete note or one quarter of a note, one eighth of a note, and finally one sixteenth of the note. Same applies to rest. So the column on the right represents the symbols for rest. The column in the middle represents the symbols for the, uh, the notes. Now we already have translated the notes based on their locations and the musical score. And we say we have G, 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 E, and then a rest, F, 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 and finally D. Now let's determine the length of each of these notes based on the symbol. As we can see, the first note, G, has the symbol. So that means we'll play it for one eighth of the note length. Note E looks like it's a half note. So we'll play it for one half of the note length. The rest is also one eighth of the note length. F is one eighth of the note length. And finally, D is half of the note length. So to help me create these as variables in MATLAB, I'm going to start with the name of the note, G, for example, and I'll follow it by eight if it's one eighth of a note. I'll use two if it's half of uh, a note. So that will give me uh, the variables G8, EV2, REST8, F8, and D2. I will need to use G8, of course, three times. Uh, F8 is also used three times and so on. Now, from the table we saw earlier, we'll obtain the frequencies that are needed for the notes uh, that we saw in the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. We'll need note G. And note G has 220 times 2 raised to the power 10 over 12 hertz as the frequency. For note EB2, or EB actually, 2 is to indicate that it's half a note actually. So for note EB, we need a frequency of 220 times 2 raised to the power 6 over 12. For note F, the frequency should be 220 times 2 raised to the power 8 over 12. So we'll say 8 over 12. Finally, for note D, the frequency should be 220 times 2 raised to the power 5 over 12. So we say 5 over 12. Now that we have gathered information about the notes that we need, the length for each note, as well as the frequency, we're ready to start implementing the MATLAB code that will help us play the sound. We'll start first by defining a, a variable named fs in which we're going to store the sampling frequency value, which is uh, 8, 8 kilohertz in this case. Next, we're choosing the uh, link for the whole note, and we're going to name that variable nl. Inside nl, we're going to store uh, two seconds. After that, we're defining the array for the time um, values. We'll name it t8, and that array will store in it one eighth of the note length, the time that is needed for one eighth of the note length. So that means we'll start with one over the sampling frequency, increment by one over the sampling frequency, until we reach one eighth of the note length, which is nl divided by eight. Similarly, we will define a time array for half the note length. We'll call it T2. T2 will start at 1 over the sampling frequency, 
increments by 1 over the sampling frequency until we reach n as divided by 2 or half the note length. After that, we will define uh, the array or the sound array for each note separately. We'll start with G8. G8 is node G that is played for 1 eighth of the note length. So we'll need to use T8 when defining G8. So G8 is defined as the cosine of 2 times pi times 220 times 2 raised to the power 10 over 12. That frequency is derived from the table that we saw earlier. Um, and it indicated to us that for us to be able to hear node G, we need uh, the frequency 220 times 2 raised to the power 10 over 12 hertz. But to convert uh, the frequency from hertz to radian per second, which is needed for MATLAB, we're multiplying by 2 pi. And after that, we're multiplying by T8, which will give us 1 eighth of the note length. Next, we will define the array EB2. Again, we'll also use the cosine function. The frequency for EB, not EB, is 220 times 2 raised to the power 6 over 12, as uh, taken from the table. We're multiplying by 2 pi, again, just to convert to radians per second. Finally, we're multiplying by T2 because we want half the note length for uh, the note EB. Next, we will define uh, the next signal we'll need, which is um, note F8. So F8 plays for 1 eighth of the note length. So it will be cosine of 2 pi times the frequency for F8 is actually 220 times 2 raised to the power 8 over 12 times T8, because we want 1 eighth of the note length. D2 is the cosine of 2 pi times 220 times 2 raised to the power 5 over 12 times T2, because again, we want half of the note length. So now we've, we've defined all the uh, signals that are needed to play each of the note for the specified uh, amount of time. Now the code in this slide is the same as what we saw earlier, except we added one line of code, and that line is defining an array named SD, or short duration, in which we're going to store uh, zeros, or an array of zeros, that we will be using in between each note. So the short duration is simply a rest or a pause between the notes. We will use it when defining the array for the signal, and it will be placed between each node to separate each node from the one that follows it. So short duration is actually a very short pause, and to be precise, the size of it is equal to 1 over 80 of the note length. Hence, we're using the length of T8, and we're dividing it by 10. And we're calling round just in case length of t8 divided by 10 does not give us uh, an integer and after that we're going to define an array named rest 8 to help us play the rest uh, that's one eighth of the note length that is right after note ab again the array rest 8 will be simply an array of all zeros and the size of it will be equal to the size of uh, T8, which is one eighth of the note length. So we'll define rest eight as the zeros we'll, we'll, by calling the zeros function. We want one row of zeros and T, the size of T8 element. That's why we'll call length of T8 to get the size of uh, one eighth of the note length. Another way to define uh, rest eight is by saying rest 8 is equal to 0 times t8 semicolon. The reason why this works is because we simply take the same size as t8, or we take t8 and we multiply each element in t8 by 0. This will give us an a whose elements are all 0, 
and the size of it is also equal to the size of T8, or the length will be 1 eighth of the knot length. So either calling the zeros function on one row and the length of T8, or creating an array, the array for rest 8 by saying 0 times T8. Both of these uh, line of code are equivalent. And after that, we'll be able to create the sound array. We will call it Beethoven 1 or Beth 1. And inside Beth 1, we'll simply put all the elements or the variables for each note that we defined earlier. So it will be G8, 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 EB2, REST8, F8, three times, and then D2. Notice how we're separating each note from the one that follows it using the short duration array, which is a small pause that will help us distinguish between each note. After that, we can directly call the sound function to help us play the sound signal with Beethoven 1 or Beth 1 with the desired sampling frequency fs. So we'll call sound on Beth 1, comma, fs. You will be able to hear or to listen to the Beethoven's fifth symphony right after calling the last line of code uh, in this slide. Now let's try run the MATLAB code that we have so far in MATLAB. I simply wrote CLC clear all and close all at the beginning of the file before defining the sampling frequency. After clicking run, I'm expecting to be able to listen to the Beethoven uh, fifth symphony array which is defined uh, in the variable Beethoven 1. So the sound function will play for me the signal Beethoven 1 with that particular sampling frequency. Now this slide is simply a reminder of how to use lens space. The lens space function simply creates for you an array of a specific number of equally spaced points between A and B in this case. So we're creating an array that starts at A, ends at B, and that array has exactly a number of points. And remember to differentiate between the lens space function and the colon notation, because with the colon notation, you know the increment value. With lens space, you know how many points are needed. We will need the lens space function uh, in this exercise to help us define the ADSR envelope function. So let's introduce that. The ADSR envelope is actually short for attack, decay, sustain, and release. We will use the ADSR envelope just to kind of like uh, mimic what you hear from a piano. Once you press a key on the piano, you will not directly hear a very, um, a very high uh, sound note or high volume note, but rather you'll notice that the audio will gradually increase in volume or in amplitude until it reaches a maximum value. And then similarly, when you release uh, the key from the piano, the audio amplitude will not immediately reach zero, but rather it will gradually decrease until it reaches zero. Hence, we will need the ADSR envelope to mimic that in MATLAB for each of the notes that we're playing. So, um, again, attack is short for, or A is short for attack, meaning once a key is pressed, you will hear or you will notice that the amplitude will increase until it reaches a maximum. And then while you're still pressing the key, the amplitude will decrease slightly and it will then stay or sustains at a particular amplitude and the moment 
the moment you release the key, the amplitude of the audio will not sharply decrease to zero, but rather will decrease gradually until it reaches a volume of zero. Now we'll do an example or an exercise on the ADSR envelope. We want to define a MATLAB function that applies the ADSR filter on a music note. We're given the duration for the attack, decay, sustain, and release as 20% for the attack period, 10% for the decay, so the duration for a decay will be 10% of the note length. And for sustain, the time spent on sustain is 60% of the note length. And finally, for the release, we want a, a duration of 10% of the note length. Now the next information we need is the maximum amplitude we'll reach after the attack. And it is given by one. From 1, during decay, we'll reach down to 0.85. We'll come down to 0.85 amplitude. And of course, during the sustain period, we'll stay at 0.85 amplitude until we reach the release point. Starting at the release uh, period, we're going to decrease the amplitude down until we reach 0 during a duration of or during a period of 10% of the note length. So let's start with the code for the MATLAB function that will implement the ADSR envelope. We'll start first with the syntax for a MATLAB function. We'll name the function ADSR. The input for the function will name it note and the output we will call it new note or modified note. So we'll say function new note is equal to ADSR note and then don't forget to end the function as part of the syntax. Next, since we will need the note length many times to define the duration of each of the attack, the case sustain and release, we'll define this as a variable called L and L will be equal to the length of the note, which is note length. Simply call the function length to obtain the note of the, the length of the note. Now we'll define the attack array. From the diagram or from the question itself, we know that during attack, we start at zero until we reach one or a volume of one. So for this, we'll use the length space function. And we, want, we will tell length space that we want to create an array that starts at 0, reaches 1. And we want exactly 20% of the node length elements, number of elements. So a will be equal to length space 0, 1, 0, 0.2 times l, which is 20% of the node length. Similarly, for the array decay, D is equal to length space, start at 1, decrease the values until you reach 0.85, which is given by the question. And we want the decay array to have 10% of the node length number of elements, which is 0.1 times L. Sustain is actually a constant or not a constant, but at, uh, it's an array whose elements are all equal to 0.85. But we can still use length space by calling s is equal to length space start at 0.85 until you reach 0.85. And we want 60% of the node length number of elements, which is 0.6 times L. That means the increment value will be zero. So we're going to create an array that starts at 0.85, stays at 0.85, but we want exactly 0.6 times L number of elements. Next, 
for the release a we will say r is equal to release actually starts at where we're left in sustain which is 0.85 until we reach zero zero volume so we'll say r is equal to length space 0.85 comma zero comma the length of that is 10% of the node length so it is 0.1 times l now all we have left is to define new node which is the whole purpose of calling the function or defining the function so don't forget to assign a value to the output of the function and new node is simply defined as note after modifying its amplitude according to the diagram given so we'll say new note is equal to note element wise multiplication which is that times the array adsr so we'll say new note is equal to note that times we open a bracket square bracket to create a new array whose elements start at a then the elements of d s and then finally r and remember here it's actually an element wise multiplication dot times bracket ADSR. So this completes the definition of the ADSR envelope function. Now what we're going to do is apply the ADSR filter on, on each of the nodes that we have. We already have created the G8 node, the EB2 array, etc. We will apply the filter function on each of these nodes. So, for example, we'll say G8E, which is short for envelope. G8E is equal, is equal to the output of the function ADSR given the input G8. So, we're applying the filter on the G8 node, and the output is stored in a new variable named G8E, short for envelope. We will repeat that for each of the nodes that we have. EB2E is equal to AD, ADSR EB2. Similarly for F8. And finally for D2. And we will pause for five seconds between sound path one or between playing the original uh, note or the original musical score and then the new mu musical score after applying the filter so before being able to call sound again we're going to create a new array we'll call it beethoven 2 or beth 2 in which we're gonna use the same array as beethoven 1 except we will put e at the end of each uh, note because we will play the notes after applying the filter to it so beethoven 2 will be equal to g8e short duration g8e again and so on notice how each uh, note we added e at the end because that variable is the same note after applying the filter to it or the adsr envelope to it we did not need to apply it on the short duration or rest eight because they're actually just an array of zeros so changing the amplitude will not make a difference and after that we will call sound on Beethoven 2 with the same sampling frequency. It's important that you pause between playing the two sounds. This way you will wait a little between uh, the first sound and the second sound. You'll be able to hear the difference between the two and you'll notice that sound Beethoven 2 is a bit smoother than uh, sound Beethoven 1. Or the sound of Beethoven one. Now we'll test the rest of our code in MATLAB, starting from G8E, uh, which is simply G8 after applying the ADSR envelope filter to it. But remember to place the function ADSR towards the end of the file, as all function definitions must appear at the end of the file in MATLAB, if not in a separate file. So the first thing we'll listen to is Beethoven 1, which is the 
signal before applying the filter to it and we'll wait for a few seconds before playing the next uh, signal which is Beethoven 2 which is simply Beethoven 1 after we applied the ADSR envelope to it we'll notice that there is an improvement in the audio signal so let's run it to see the difference see how there is a slight improvement in the volume um, uh, for each note since we applied the ADSR envelope. The last exercise in this lab requires us to call the spectrogram function in MATLAB to help us look at the short time Fourier transform of the signal Beethoven 2. You can call this command and uh, examine the graph that you will get. This is all there is in this video. If you have any question, please let me know.